The Indian stock market has hit a market valuation of $4 trillion, making it the fifth largest stock market in the world. Now, what does it mean? In simple terms, the valuation or the market capitalization of all the publicly listed companies on the Indian stock exchanges, including two of the biggest exchanges, the National Stock Exchange or NSE and the Bombay Stock Exchange or BSE, is now over $4 trillion. $4.16 trillion to be exact. Now, before we dive deep into the topic, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you do not miss our new videos. Now, to make it even simpler, let us understand what do we mean by market valuation. Let's say a company A has 1000 outstanding shares, meaning all the stocks that are held by all the shareholders of the company and the price of one share is about $10. So the total market valuation of that company will be $10 multiplied by 1000 outstanding shares, which comes out to be $10,000. Let us also take a look at the biggest stock markets in the world. The US stock market is the biggest stock market in the world with over $50 trillion in market valuation or market capitalization, which is followed by the Chinese stock market at about $10.5 trillion. The third largest stock market in the world is the Japanese stock market with a valuation of just over $6 trillion, followed by Hong Kong stock market with about $4.5 trillion in market capitalization. And then we have the Indian stock market, which is about $4.16 trillion in market capitalization. Now, let us also take a look at the growth of these stock markets in the last one year, in 2023. So, the US stock market grew at about 22% in the last one year, whereas the Chinese stock market actually took a hit and fell by about 8.81%. And the same happened with the Hong Kong stock market, which fell about 12.6% in the same year. The other two markets, namely the Japanese stock market and the Indian stock market, saw some growth with the Japanese stock market growing at about 11.6% and the Indian stock market which grew at about 25% in 2023. Now this makes us question why is the Indian stock market growing? At this point it is important for us to understand that a major reason for the stock market growth this year has been an increase in investments by FII which stands for foreign institutional investors. So India witnessed an inflow of investments of about 18 billion dollars by FII or foreign institutional investors and it is also important to note these FIIs were actually net sellers of Indian stocks in September and October and were the net buyers of stocks in the months of November and December. This also opens up one more question for us. Why are foreign institutional investors investing in India? There are multiple reasons for that and a huge part of that reason is India's GDP numbers. Now India grew at about 7.6 percent in the second quarter of 2023 as compared to the expected numbers which were at about 6.8 percent now this is a huge a relatively huge growth in terms of numbers because no one was expecting such kind of growth in just one quarter quarterly growth has acted as a catalyst in the increase of investments in the indian stock market indian economy is expected to grow at a faster pace to be specific it is growing at a rate which is expected to outpace the growth of china and other asian economies so much so that India is expected to be the growth engine of Asia's economic growth as per the S&P Global Ratings of 2023. And I've talked more about that in detail in this video here. So if you're interested in checking that video out, you can find the link in the description and you can watch it after you watch this video. India is also expected to be the third largest economy in the world by 2027. India is expected to take over Germany and Japan, which are the fourth and the fifth largest economies in the world. And India will outgrow them in the next next three to four years. And what are the reasons for that economic growth? Now, one of the major reasons for that is that the Indian economy, specifically Indian businesses, they are growing at a faster pace. Not only that, but India has a relatively younger population. And when we compare it to China, India's median age is about 28 years, whereas China's median age is about 39 years. That not only makes the Indian population young, but it also instills a belief that the younger population is going to work harder. And not only that, but the younger population is also going to spend more money on goods and services, which in turn is going to add value to the Indian economy. And that is exactly why foreigners or foreign investors, they are so in interested in emerging economies like India. On the other hand, global investors, they are losing their confidence in the Chinese stock market. Not only that, but the Chinese economy as a whole. And that is in part due to the current Chinese economic crisis. I've explained the Chinese economic crisis in this video here. If you're interested to learn more, please 
please click the link in the description after you watch this video. To give you a gist as to what is happening in China, China is going through the worst real estate crisis wherein two of the major companies of China, they are on the verge of bankruptcy. They have, they have lapsed their debt payments. And not only that, but China is also facing a problem of an aging population. All of this combined with a youth unemployment problem that China is currently facing. And this is why the SNP Global Ratings has said that China is going to slow down in the coming years. And in addition to this, many American companies or many global companies as a whole, they're leaving their manufacturing units from China and they're targeting markets to establish their manufacturing units in countries like India. And one of the major examples of the same is Apple. Apple has shifted a part of its manufacturing unit in India and is now producing about 7% of the iPhones in India. Not only that, but Foxconn, which is Apple's supplier, has also decided to invest in the Indian economy and has planned a $1.5 billion investment in the coming years. So when we have these global companies that are looking at India that are shifting their manufacturing and production units from China to India, it is a sign of India's economic growth. And this is exactly what the foreign institutional investors are also betting on. Yet another reason, and this also is one of the major reasons, is the political stability in India. With the recent election wins of BJP in three states, namely Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, this has instilled or reinstated the confidence that BJP or the Bharatiya Janata Party is going to win the upcoming elections in May 2024. Political stability plays an important role in deciding the course of investments in a particular country. If a country is politically stable, it will attract foreign investors because it will have friendlier policies towards businesses. The Bharatiya Janata Party has been in power for 10 years, for about 10 years now. And this belief that BJP is going to come again in power and remain in power after winning the upcoming elections has boosted the morale of investors because it is highly unlikely for the ruling party to take back its policies that have benefited the businesses. However, if the ruling party does not win the coming elections, it will cause some sort of panic in the markets because the market, specifically the investors, they do not know the stance of the next government towards businesses and investors. So that way, political stability is extremely important from a business perspective because if the ruling party does not come in power and the opposition party wins the elections, the opposition party after coming into power may change the existing policies that have benefited businesses and investments. And that calls for political instability in a country, which will pull out the investments. Now, yet another reason for the growth of the Indian stock market has been the growth in the number of IPOs or initial public offerings. Now, what is an initial public offering? It is when a large company or even a relatively smaller company decides to sell its shares to the public. It is listed on the stock market for the very first time. And that is also called the primary market. When an IPO comes in and when these shares are open to trade amongst retail investors, that becomes the secondary market trade. So there's been a growth in IPOs this year with about 170 main board IPOs and more than 50 SMEs or small and medium enterprises IPOs. Many of these IPOs experienced oversubscription. There are only a handful number of shares that are available for issuing an allotment. There are more and more number of people that are that are willing to invest their money. So this is a case of oversubscription. Let us talk about small enterprises. Small enterprises are companies that have a turnover of less than 50 crore rupees. On the other hand, medium enterprises are enterprises that have a turnover of less than 250 crore rupees. And on the other hand, main, main board IPOs or main board companies are the large cap companies that are listed on NSC and BSC. Whereas SMEs or small and medium enterprise companies, they're listed on NSE Emerge for the most part. These are some of the most important reasons for the growth of the Indian stock market in 2023. And I believe that if India continues to grow at the current rate, we will definitely witness the same trend in 2024 as well. What do you think about the growth of the Indian stock market? Please let me know in the comments below. If you found this video valuable, please share it with your friends and family. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and have a great day.